This video is sponsored by Zero Zero Robotics. All right, Rick Aramelli here. Today's video, we're gonna talk about the V-Copter. Zero Zero Robotics sent me this two motor drone. And as you can see, it kinda looks like a Batman drone or made for Batman anyway. So very cool shape. So in this video, I'm gonna go over all the features of this drone. So let's jump right into it. So let's start with the aircraft. So it folds down like this. You can just press these two knobs and it folds down. You can just take the motors and move it in like this and then it folds up like this, okay? So very cool shape. And since the unboxing isn't too exciting, I'm gonna save that for the end of this video. On the top is the power button right there, and that turns on the battery, which you can see here. It's a very big, robust battery. And the reason why it's so big is because it flies up to 50 minutes. I'm gonna talk about the flight time later in this video. Now on the bottom of this drone, you have the downward sensors right here. There's a light indicator in the back, some vents back there as well. And then in the front, you have the two obstacle avoiding sensors. Of course, the camera 3-axis gimbal, which goes down 90 degrees. And if you just press the battery, it lights up and it'll tell you out of the four lights how much the battery is charged. So in the drone world, this is pretty typical. What's unusual is the fact that it only has two motors and these propellers are really, really big and they're low noise propellers. So they don't really make too much noise. A very, very quiet drone. And part of the reason it's so quiet is because it only has two motors. It's got these two motors, one here, one here, obviously, and then the low noise propellers. So you can fly this drone really far and it stays really quiet. Okay, those are probably the two biggest features. For me, those are two best selling points, but let's get more into detail about this drone. Oh, one last thing, it also has a gigabytes of internal storage and you can put a micro SD card in here. I just put a 128 gigabyte card into the little slot right there. When you're not flying it, good idea to just fold it up. Gimbal cover goes right on the front. Pretty standard, normal the gimbal, keeps it in place. It also came with a landing pad. You can use it. I decided not to use it because I thought maybe it's just more wind resistance and I like to fly my drones as fast as I can and have the most flight time as possible. So to me, it was not necessary. Like it has these little cushioned, four little cushion spots on the battery. So I just landed it on the battery on the ground and that seemed to work out just fine. All right, so here's the controller made of plastic, but it has a nice grip on the side. I would say it's kind of a nice feel because your hands fit in there quite nicely. I wish the controller was a little smaller, but it's pretty standard. I did like the design, the fact that this went up and you can put your phone right here. Some people like the phone on top. I prefer the phone right here. I kind of like that because it's really in your face while you're flying. Also the control sticks, you can unscrew them and they're made of metal, which is really nice. Return to home button right here, a stop button right here to stop recording. And you have your record button on the top, record for video, and then to take photos is on top, or you can just do it in the app. I just do it in the app, but if you want to do that, you could. And then it has two dials on top. One is to make the gimbal go down 90 degrees. And then the other dial is to control the exposure or the EV. So you can raise that up or down. I didn't use this one. I only used the gimbal because I just kind of left the exposure the way it was. And then you have customizable buttons on the bottom, which the only one I used was this left one for the map to bring up the map to see where I was. And that's about it. Very straightforward controller. And then right over here, it has the USB-C, that's to charge the controller. And then a USB cord right here for your device. Now you can also put a tablet, like a, a holder right here for your tablet, but it's a lot easier to fly with your phone just the way it's set up right here. So I just use my phone. Also on the controller on the side, you have S and L mode. L is for leisure, kind of like normal flying mode. And then the S mode is for sport mode for flying fast and the obstacle avoiding sensors are off in sport mode, whereas they're on in leisure mode. I typically flew in sport mode, but I'll explain that later in this video. And then also the antennas, they just fold it up like this, okay? 
So, and it had really good signal strength. So let's move on to the features of this drone. This drone zero zero robot extended to me with just one battery. And I found that that one battery was usually enough for flying to get a lot of shots. Now it would have been nice to have a second battery, but with one battery, I've typically got about 40 to 45 minutes of flight time. Now it says up to 50 minutes, but I like to fly in sport mode and it was quite windy outside. And sometimes when I was flying too, it was also really cold. So some of these different factors can affect Affect the battery life, the way you fly, the wind, and so forth. It does have really good flight time. Now, the VCopter app, which you need to fly this drone, is very simple and basic. So, if you don't like a lot of complicated things and just want to get going and fly, this is the app for you. Now, in the app, it has three basic modes Omni Follow, Manual Control, and Track Shots. Now, for me, I like to have total control, so I use Manual Control. Now, the Omni Follow was very good, as well as the tracking feature, and I'll talk about that in a second. So I started out in manual mode in 4K and the only option there is 30 frames per second, which was fine, but I like to shoot at a higher frame rate. So I shot instead at 2.7K at 60 frames per second. Now I wish there was a 24 frames per second, but you only have 30 and 60. So I went with the 60 option. And the nice thing about shooting at 60 frames per second, you can slow it down or speed it up. So that's why I shot at 2.7K, which kind of brought back memories of the Mavic 2 Pro. I always used to shoot that at 2.7K at 60 frames per second. And like I said, you can slow that down or speed it up in post-production. So that gives you a lot of leniency and difference between 2.7K and 4K isn't too much that I felt like it still was really good image quality. Now for photos, it says JPEG and RAW, but I was only able to shoot in JPEG as you can see here. And it also had time shot where you're able to shoot in th every three seconds or 10 seconds, or you could just turn that off. Personally, I wish the RAW option was available. Maybe, maybe that will be available in the future with a firmware update. And then for the photos, it also had the grid lines, which is really nice because you can frame up the shot, keep whatever you're shooting in the center, like right here. I was shooting at my old high school football field. And I just wanted to keep everything in centers and having the grid lines helps do that. So if you want the drone to follow you, you use a feature called Omni Follow Mode. So if you go into that main settings, if you go into Omni Follow, I use that. And the drone basically followed me all around. I didn't have any problems with it, went around this light post, didn't have any signal interference or anything like that. Drone tracks you really well and it's very simple. Just press it and then you'll see it'll automatically find you and then you just tap on the screen and then you just press record. So, so pretty straightforward and I would say overall very good tracking. Now there's other thing called track shots, which is kind of like droney, which basically makes the drone go out and away. So you just do that the same way as Omni Follow and just press it and then the drone just goes out and away and it keeps you in the center, whatever the subject is right there. And it goes out and then it comes all the way back as well. Worked as advertised and you get a nice smooth shot right there. Now, earlier in the video, I mentioned that I fly in sport mode. The reason I flew in sport mode and not leisure mode, is I found in leisure mode, the obstacle avoidance tended to be a little overactive or a little too sensitive. And I don't really mind flying in sport mode anyway. So I just put it in sport mode and I found it was a really good speed. I could go a lot faster. Of course, you could also fly in leisure mode and turn the obstacle avoidance off if you want so that it is an option. So flying in sport mode at 2.7K at 60 frames per second, I was able to get really the shots I wanted because I was able to fly fast. And like I said before, I was able to slow down and speed up the footage because I was at 60 frames per second. Now this timeline that I'm editing this video is 24 frames per second. So the advantage of having 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second is that 30 frames per second, you can slow it down ever so slightly and 60 frames per second, you can slow it down much more. So personally, I like doing that, but that's your own personal preference. 
Now I didn't do any range tests, but I found the signal strength to be really good. I flew over buildings and over trees and all around and never had any problem with the signal dropping. So that was really good. It says zero zero robotics says this drone can go up to seven kilometers or four miles. Now, obviously I'm never gonna fly it that far, but in terms of distance and signal strength really was no issue. And, and basically I could fly it anywhere I wanted. Then in the app and also on the controller, it has the return to home button or the RTH button, which work perfectly. And you can also set the return to home height, which I did in the app, no problem there as well. So like I said, the best part about this drone is the flight time and the cool look of it. The fact that it's really quiet, flies really far, and you're really not gonna see many drones that look like this. Sort of like it belongs with Batman or the Batmobile, right? The signal strength was really great, as well as the tracking feature. Now in the app, although I was able to change the EV, I wasn't able to change the ISO or shutter speed. So hopefully with a firmware update in the future, that would be nice. But if you just wanna fly and you wanna get the automatic exposure, this app will do it for you. So for most hobbyists, this is really nice. All right, that's it. Now we're gonna get into the unboxing. All right, so now we're gonna unbox the V-Copter Falcon. So we're gonna start with this. We have the box for the drone and we have the controller box. So let's jump right into it. All right, so we have this card for unfolding the arms. And of course we only have two arms because it's a bicopter. So we'll put that over here. And wow, look at this case, pretty cool case. We got the little disclaimer and safety instructions. And then we have underneath, all right, we got the charging cable and charger right here. Then this is for landing. And then we got some propellers here and wow, they're big. These, these propellers are some serious propellers. Very big, looks like they're low noise, judging by the design. So we got a screwdriver and some extra screws right here. And right here, another cable. I assume this is for charging or for downloading your footage. And this is a USB to USB-C. And that's it. All right, so we're gonna put the box aside. And the box is pretty cool because the coolest part of the box I like is that Falcon right there. That's the box right here. Before we get to the controller, now we open and we get the drone. So, alrighty, wow. Very cool shape. I mean, the coolness factor of this drone is probably one of its best selling points. You're not gonna see other drones like this, wow. Wow, it feels like it's got some weight to it. Does not feel light at all. Feels very sturdy, robust. This just closes like that. All right, so this is a nice protective case you can have, just carry around, put it in your bag. Wow, the design is so cool. I mean, this drone is, I'm gonna take off these stickers right here first. All right, make sure you remove all the stickers. This drone, I, I gotta say, this is probably the coolest design drone I've ever seen or ever owned. Battery goes undone like that. That's the battery right there. We can press that little button there. It looks like it has four lights. So I'm gonna charge that up before we get started. Charging is, I think, pretty standard, pretty self-explanatory. You got a USB cord right there. The arms, wow, they go up like that. The design is just very cool. Now let's see the gimbal. You got a pinch on the side right here just to open it and pretty standard gimbal. Looks like you can't go up 90 degrees because this is blocking here, but you can go down. It looks like 90 degrees and very cool. Looks sturdy, looks great. The thing I'm noticing most is the weight to it. I did not expect even the battery, the drone, it feels a lot more robust. It just feels very solid. I was not expecting this. Okay, so let's... And that just goes back in there. Then it's got some sensors there, the light back here, some vents in the back, some sensors in the front, obstacle avoidance. This is for turning it on. Okay, so I guess you gotta, you gotta press in the side when you put the arms down over here. Press in the side to put the arms down. It just goes in like that and folds up, folds up. Very nice job, Zero Zero. Gotta say, you guys, did a great job with the design. So there it is. That's the V-Copter right there. Now let's get to the controller. The controller says Blast Off Controller. <laughs> great name for a controller. 
Got a little instruction manual here. We're gonna pull it out. And this in here, you got a little harness. That's nice for the controller. So you can put that around your neck. I'm probably not gonna do that, but that is a nice touch. You could put this, attach that to the controller, put that around your neck. That is a nice touch. I tend to not use it. That's just my style, but. Um... All right, now the controller, wow. Controller feels very light. So the drone feels very robust and has some weight to it, right? But the controller feels very light in hand has a nice feel to it. It's not, it's like a plastic, but it has, it has almost like a little bit of a grip to it on the sides. It says stop right here, return to home. Just two buttons right there. On the other side, we can pull this out. And this is for our phone. Wow, nice job. Is it big enough for an, for an iPad? Probably not. Probably it's just gonna be good for your phone. But you could attach a holder to this and probably use an iPad as well. Wow, so these are the antennas, folds, unfolds like that. So the antennas just go up. These are the control sticks. Wow, these control sticks are made of metal. Got two buttons right there. Feels really nice, nice simple design. I gotta say, in terms of design engineering, Zero Zero Robotics did a great job. There we go, and it says S and L. And then this is the on button, on and off button. Record for video, record for photo. You got your gimbal up and down. So that's the controller, that's the unboxing. All right, that's it for my review of the V-Copter Falcon. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to so get more drone tutorials, news, and reviews. I'm Breck Aramella, and remember, fly like a pro.